Hey everybody, Charlie with NHORC here. Today I'm coming at you with the first in a series of videos about fine tuning your performance on your Losi Promoto MX here. So, as everybody knows, this thing is not a regular RC car. It is an RC motorcycle. It has to balance, it's got a gyro, it's got a flywheel. It handles a lot differently than most RCs that you're used to. So with that comes this new Losi DX Spectrum 3 controller that has a whole bunch of extra settings on it. So this video I'm going to be focusing on working on discovering how the gyro really functions one way to the other. In the manual if you read it it's pretty vague. It's basically only really mentioned in the quick start guide and it just says turn the gyro up to lean more. But what does that mean in practice, right? There's a lot of people I've seen online saying this thing's really hard to handle. It's too hard to uh, drive around a smaller track. And I just don't think that's the case. I think it requires A, practice, and B, uh, tuning this thing right. So in this first one, I'm gonna be setting up a test track here in my driveway that has a series of cones laid out. And I'm basically going to do a series of tests here to understand how the gyro functions at different speeds, different turning radiuses. In a future video, I'm gonna do a similar one with the front brake trim and sub trim features. So I'm going to get this thing powered up. I'm going to show you the test track, kind of walk you through my methodology here. So what you see behind me here is my driveway. This is a pretty sandy, gravelly mixture. It's very hard. Uh, it doesn't go very far if you, you know, uh, kind of dig into it. it. It really kind of just lets you slide around a little bit. It seems like a pretty good location to do this test. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with the gyro all the way up. Everything else I'm going to leave alone. So the bike is trimmed to be straight for me. Uh, you know, with the, the steering sub trim, front brakes are trimmed how I want them for this surface at the moment. Again, I'll go into brake trim uh, testing at a later point. This is going to be in dirt mode for the riding. All of this is going to be in dirt mode when I get the Losi Pro Moto Supermoto tires. I'll probably do another similar one on pavement, but I don't have them yet. So all I'm going to be doing for this whole video is playing with this knob. I'm going to start with it all the way maxed out and I'm going to basically just, I'm going to get a certain speed going so it's nice and stable through probably the innermost set of cones, maybe the second set, and I'm going to be holding it full lock in whichever direction I'm going. As I'm driving, I'm going to change the gyro positions and I'll announce when I do this. I'm probably going to do it in four stages. I'm going to go from full on to a quarter to half to one quarter to off. And we're going to see what that does to how the bike controls here. So uh, I'm going to have some footage from my GoPro further down as well. Uh, that way I can kind of see the lean as we go. I'll announce things. I'll probably narrate over. And we're going to see how this goes. Uh, so this is currently being tested on a 100C battery. Uh, <clears throat> everything's stock, no changes, stock factory tires. And let's see what this gyro really does. Hey everyone, so I think the best way to understand exactly how the gyro actually functions is to look at some stills and some slow motion video here. So if you just want the short version, this is all you really need to watch. I encourage you to watch the rest of the video as you uh, you know, can watch along with me as I kind of experiment with it. But if you're looking for the quick version, the beginning here is all you're really going to need to watch. So uh, on the right we have 100% gyro as it's represented on the transmitter and on the left we have 0% gyro as represented on the transmitter. Now in the manual it says the 100% gyro is actually 100% lean and 0% uh, gyro is 0% lean which is far more accurate. So in the right frame 100% gyro the gyro is fully off and in the left frame, 0% gyro, the gyro is actually 100% on. So, <clears throat> what this means, basically, is when you have the knob turned all the way up to the right on 100% gyro, uh, the bike uh, just does what you're telling it to do. There's no gyro override. So here I'm turning the wheel full lock. I want the bike to turn to the left the wheel turns to the right because it's reversed to make the bike turn and basically the gyro does absolutely nothing in this scenario it's just like you want to go that way I'm gonna hold the wheel here it's up to you to make the rest work in the left I'm telling it I want to go 
left as hard as I can, but the gyro is on as hard as it can, which is 0%. So the bike is making micro adjustments. You can see them here. Even though I'm giving it the same input in both shots, the wheel is turned much further left. It's making all kinds of micro adjustments. Now, if this was a full scale bike, you'd also be able to use your body to control this and doing the micro adjustments with the uh, handlebars wouldn't be that hard, but given the small scale and high speed, it becomes incredibly difficult to make these micro adjustments. This is basically how a drift gyro works on a drift RC car, except this is reversed. So, uh, in theory, you could uh, put the bike at 100% gyro and it would uh, function the same if you could make the micro adjustments fast enough. So here we've got some annotations you can see at the beginning of the uh, turn the wheels are basically the same. I've annotated the wheel direction here with a little red tick on each. The initiation to the turn looks exactly the same on both. So in this next frame that's coming up we're halfway through the turn you can see on the right frame uh, the bike is drifting so the bike is just following what I am telling it to do it's holding the front wheel fully locked and it's initiating the drift in the left frame the bike although it's receiving the same input because the gyro is on it is ignoring my controls and turning the wheel to the left to result in that sharper turn the result of this here you can see is that in the right frame, I'm still drifting. The bike as a whole is not even past the apex of the corner yet. Uh, but in the left frame, the bike has made substantially more progress rotating around the corner. And it's either at the middle of its apex or just past it. So this is, for me, I think the best way to really understand how the gyro works, at least at low speeds. Um, so if you're on a looser surface um, you're gonna see that drift occur if you're on a higher traction surface I'd imagine uh, you're gonna need a lot more throttle to get the same kind of drift with the full power uh, gyro uh, at quote 100 percent this kind of analysis really helps me as a driver of this bike understand exactly what the bike is really doing so I think if you are on a surface or a track that has big banked turns, you're really going to need to adjust the gyro accordingly. Now, I'm going to try to do that testing, but I haven't done it yet, so I don't want to speak to uh, exactly you know, what I think the gyro should be set at. But with this knowledge, right, you can try to be more informed about where you should be setting the gyro. So <clears throat> in the video, I do refer to it backwards pretty much. Uh, for the majority of the video that follows I hope you watch it but um, you know it it's it's not intuitive uh, like like you would hope I'm not sure how Losi could message this better uh, it took me quite a while of watching this footage and kind of just thinking about how it really functions to come to a better understanding of it now having this understanding uh, I think I'll do a lot better and knowing that if I really do turn the gyro all the way off, I could drive potentially this fast if I could make those micro adjustments, I think is going to be very interesting uh, going forward. I don't think it's possible to drive as good as the gyro just due to the small size and the need for the micro adjustments that you just simply won't be able to make fast enough. But um, yeah, I, I, I would be surprised if anyone really runs this with no gyro ever. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Please subscribe if this has helped you. All right, the bike's spooling up. I've got everything on. My gyro is at all the way on. I'm going to stabilize it into a circle, and then I'm going to start playing with it once I've got a really stable circle on. And this is full gyro again. All right. So this is about as slow as I can reasonably go without dumping it. Ooh, and even that, it still gets kind of squirrely. This thing really likes throttle. So we're gonna speed it up. Right, it's probably about half throttle with full gyro. As you can see, I, I keep kind of uh, dragging that inside lean bar if I really try to crank it. Um, you know, let's just go to a full, a full turn. All right, this is what I was trying to get earlier. 
So you can see that thing is really kind of drifting out. The back tire is stepping way wide. This is about that much, whoa, throttle. All right, hold on. All right, so I can't just full lock the wheel. That plan's not gonna work and stay up. But, well, maybe. Oh, and there goes the GoPro. All right, the cones were a total bust here. So, all right, I'm gonna try to do that in front of the camera. So, basically, this is about half throttle. Whoa. Okay, hold on. Get to stabilize better than that. We're, woohoo, roughly half throttle. The bike has a lot of drift to it. So, a lot of drift going on. So, as you can see, whoa. Um, with full throttle and full lock, or sorry, about half throttle, somewhere between a quarter and half throttle, on this surface, I'm getting a lot of drift. This is full gyro. A lot of drift going on. And the bar isn't quite touching the ground at this particular speed. Woo, till that happens. I'm gonna try to do the tightest turns we can here. So ton of drift to hold that. I'm about one quarter throttle and full lock. And that's the circles it's holding. A lot of drift. You can see the back end drifting a lot. I'll put some of the GoPro footage in here with full gyro. But it really wants to slide and it's really trying to keep that left hand lean bar off the ground. So, we're gonna come to a stop. We're gonna change it. I'm gonna go to about 75% gyro. We're gonna do it again. And I'm gonna walk for it, because it's down. All right, 75% gyro, try to do the same thing. So, uh, I'm definitely dragging that inside lean bar a little more. It's still got a lot of drift going on. I'm gonna try to get a little closer to the camera. It's still got a lot of drift, and I'm trying to hold as much, like, all of these are about, I don't know, a third to a half throttle with a ton of, a ton of skid here. So, whoo, there go my cones. Go the other way. Oh, that'll look cool. Whoa, and there goes my GoPro again. All right, I'm going to drop the gyro down to about 50% now. All right. So it's way more willing to let the bike lay over. Uh, way more willing to get that lean bar in. So to keep it upright, I'm having to give it more and more throttle. Uh, it's just, it's super, it's, it's getting way more willing to just drop me as we turn the gyro down here. Um, that being said, if I really try to finesse it, I think it's actually smoother in a smaller circle. So that's a pretty tight circle here. You know, you get a little skid in the rear. It's still drifting some, but not as bad as it was. Cone. All right, we're gonna turn it down again. So now we're gonna go to uh, about 25%. All right, now it's really willing to let me drag that, that inside lean bar. So if basically I'm full lock. All of this time for all of these, I've been like full lock on the steering. So this is full lock right. And it's all about the throttle control. It's, it's almost like a drift car on this surface. Whoa, super wide. Go the other way. Uh, with the gyro down this much, I, I'm really having to feather the throttle to keep it in the air. Because if I let off the throttle, as soon as I let off the throttle, a little bit it really see like that was like 10 percent lean off the throttle and it really is now dragging that inside lean bar all right let's let's remove the gyro entirely i'm gonna move it to zero here in theory gyro off i think it's still on but just you know much lower so now full lock again right here a full lock is just letting me drive that. Whoa, can you save it? Woo! <laughs> at full lock, it's letting me just basically lay the thing over at low throttle. So, with no gyro, 
Yeah, like you can be really precise with how long you want to drag that lean bar on the ground, which to be honest, especially on this surface where there's rocks and imperfections, dragging the lean bar on the ground is kind of a liability because it'll catch um it'll catch small rocks. I earlier when I was I was messing around with this on my lunch and I had the idea for this video. Uh, I hit a bigger rock as I was cruising around with the lean bar and it kind of like launched the whole thing. Um, so yeah, with no gyro, it really lets you kind of just do what you want to do with it, right? And it's just, you're pretty much, it, it's drifting much less you can see here. Like the back end isn't, woo, sticking out nearly as hard as it was on full gyro so full lock it'll you can just drag that lean bar it'll let you go way lower to the ground all right so and now we're going to go from zero gyro back to 100 percent gyro whoa almost took my tripod out we're going to go from zero all the way up to full gyro and compare it again so all right we're back at full gyro now I'm full lock, I'm way higher in the throttle. So I, I am half to three quarters in the throttle and that's about the smallest circle I can hold. Let's switch directions here, woo. Oh, my camera, I gotta reset the camera, woo. All right, so this is pretty much the tightest turn I can hold at full gyro and it is drifting like crazy. So. If you see, hopefully I'll cut in some of the GoPro footage. With this full gyro, you can see this thing drifting like mad. It's, it, it'll it'll kind of hold the turn on this surface. I'll be really interested to see how this does with the Supermoto tires. Oh no, whew. <laughs> uh, it'll hold It'll hold the circle on this surface because it's so soft and, and loose. But uh, I think on a high traction surface, there's no way. That this would hold. So we're gonna go back to zero gyro mid turn here if I can. Okay, mid turn. All right, I immediately got a much bigger circle. So now I'm easing off the throttle. And look at that, I can hold a way smaller turn. I do have to be careful about the lean bar. Ooh, and my camera. <laughs> Let me reset the camera again. Whoa. All right. So, we're at gyro off right now. And, yeah, so a gyro off, whoa, you get yourself in trouble with the smaller turns. But if, you're, if you've got the finesse, okay, it's tough. You wanna try to carry that lean bar as low as you can without touching it. You can see there's way less drifting going on in the bike. I'm at a much lower throttle input, so, on this surface, which is again a loose and a sand gravel, it's not super deep, but it's very hard. Um, <clears throat> it it really wants to just like let you drop. Like it, there, there's definitely still some gyro going on. It's saving me occasionally, but it will drop me if I need it to. So if we go back to, ah, oh crap, my camera again. Hold on. <laughs> we're at no gyro and we're gonna go back to full gyro while we're moving here yeah you see in order to hold the same circle I immediately need to give it much more throttle so with that kind of throttle application if you're on a higher traction surface it's just not gonna be possible I don't think to do the narrower corners like I had to give it full bore to save myself there and on no gyro I wouldn't have needed to save myself, assuming I drove it correctly. Okay, so this is full gyro, and I, I really can't, like, at full gyro, ugh, you just have to rely on power to hold, to hold the turn. So, all right, I think there's enough donuts. I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna set up like a big U corner and change batteries, because this one's almost dead, and do a bunch of testing around a, a consistent U-turn. All right, I've set up a U-turn that's way sharper than anything you'll find on a real RC track. So we're gonna see how the different gyro settings impact 
uh, taking a, a sharp U-turn like this and what kind of speeds we can do at different settings. So at full gyro, it drifts like mad. Drivable. Woo! Not a good start with the full gyro. Woo! <laughs> I think this is the problem I was having in my first video. Oh. oh no, my cones! I think the lesson is gonna be there's no way to turn this sharp with this much gyro. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Woo! It is hard. I think the key here, if you're trying to race tight tracks, is you're going to need like no gyro. One more, that one was really bad. It could be like way back. Alright, we're going to turn the gyro down. Alright, we're going to drop the gyro to 50% here. And we're going to try it again. Oh yeah, immediately more control. All right, sorry about that. You may have just seen me knock my camera clear over. Not what you want to do. All right, we're gonna drop the gyro down to zero and see how we do. Yeah, so it's definitely easier with the gyro somewhere. I'm gonna put it at a third. I feel like that might be the, the key. 